Queens and kings of physical computing, this is Prof G, and in this video we'll take a spin using potentiometers. A potentiometer is an analog input device, usually a knob, but there are other kinds as well. And in a prior video we used this knob style potentiometer breakout with the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. We'll now show how we can hook this device up to any microcontroller that's connected via a breadboard. And in case you have one of these far more common, inexpensive plastic potentiometers, you'll often find these in intro electronics kits. I'll show you how you can use one of these as well. The concepts are very similar. Now we'll first show how to use CircuitPython to read values from the potentiometer, and then we'll have a challenge and show the solution to turn the individual LEDs in our light strip on or off based on readings from the potentiometer. So let's give this a spin. So my students have one of these potentiometers that's on a breakout board, and they also have this three-clip cable for easy hookup, but you can hook up one of these inexpensive plastic potentiometers common in many intro electronic kits too. All you'll need is three jumper wires. I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. Now these two potentiometers have knobs, but there are lots of other kinds of potentiometers as well. For example, my students also have three slider potentiometers. They're also connected via the same three-wire setup, power, ground, and signal, and I'll show you how to use those in a future video. Now here are the wiring diagrams for either of the knob potentiometers I just showed. Anytime you use a potentiometer, you've got three wires, power, signal, and ground. And when choosing a signal pin, make absolutely sure that you're choosing a pin that supports analog input. If not, then you'll get an error in the serial console. In this wiring scheme, I'm using an Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, and I've chosen pin A3, which is one of the pins that supports analog input on this board. Also make sure that you use 3.3 volt power. If you use VI in, this will likely provide an excess of power and that will result in incorrect readings toward the high end of the scale. And here's a quick look at how things are set up with one of these inexpensive plastic potentiometers. Now if I take this off of the breadboard, you see that there are three legs. The left one is what I attach to ground, the middle to signal, the right to power. And here's the setup of the potentiometer breakout board. The jumper wires are heading into the same locations on the breadboard, but the other ends of the jumper wire are alligator clipped to the potentiometer. Now to code things up, this is familiar to you if you use potentiometers in our earlier video with the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. We import analog in from analog I.O., then we create an analog in object, I'm calling mine potentiometer, a good name for a potentiometer, and mine is connected to pin A3. Make sure that you change this if you use a different pin on your board, and then down here we'll simply put the reading return from the potentiometer's value property into a tuple, then we'll print that so that we can view the number in the serial console and we can also view the plotted output in the Moo plotter. So let's code. So here's our potentiometers code. We'll import from board and time and also from analog IO, we'll import analog in. Then we'll create our analog in object. We're gonna call that potentiometer, setting that equal to capital A analog capital I in and we're gonna pass in board.a3 since that's where my signal pin is connected to. And then in while true, just a reminder that the value that we're getting from the potentiometer is going to return a value from 0 to 65,520. And then inside the print statement with two parentheses, we'll say potentiometer.value, comma, and we'll close with two parentheses. This puts it in a tuple so that we can plot it as well as print it. And just to make sure that we can see this output, we'll time.sleep, and in parentheses, we'll pass in 0 0.2 so that we're waiting two tenths of a second in between our reads. Then save this to your CircuitPy volume as code.py, and we'll open up the serial console and the plotter. I'll adjust the windows, then I can pick up the potentiometer knob. And look at this, as I turn things, I start off and I'm down at the low end of the potentiometer knob, but as I turn clockwise, I can see the numbers are getting larger and larger until I'm up around 65,000. I can go back down, I can move this in both directions, my potentiometer readings are working fine. Another scale down, good work, now it's time for a challenge. So in this challenge, you'll modify your code so that as you turn the potentiometer, you light up the LEDs on your NeoPixel light strip. So turn to the far left counterclockwise and you shouldn't see any lights. Turn to the far right or clockwise and you should see all of the lights light up. And you should progressively turn the lights on or off as you rotate the potentiometer knob in either direction. The video on the right is showing you how things should look when things are done. As a hint, you might wanna look at the code that we wrote in our previous example when we were working with our proximity sensor. So why don't you give this a shot? Pause. I know you can do it. And when you're ready, resume, and we'll compare answers. So this is going to be code for potentiometers and our NeoPixel strip. And we need to import NeoPixel since we're working with our NeoPixels. And let's create a strip object. And in order to do that, first we'll set up strip underscore pin equal to board.d7. If you're using a different signal pin for your LED strip, make sure that you change that here. 
then strip underscore num of lights equals 30. I happen to have 30 LEDs on my NeoPixel strip. And then I'm going to call my object strip, set that equal to NeoPixels dot capital N Neo capital P pixels. And in parentheses, I'm going to pass in strip underscore pin, comma, strip num of lights, comma, brightness equals 0.5, and comma, auto underscore write equals true. Then in the while true loop, you'll notice that this code is going to look remarkably similar to the code that we wrote when working with our proximity sensor. So we'll set up LEDs to light equals potentiometer dot value instead of getting the value from our proximity sensor. And we're going to divide that by a ratio we get by dividing 65,520, which is the max value we could get from our potentiometer. And we're going to divide that by strip num of lights. But then remember, we need to convert this to an integer. We need to drop the decimal values so we're going to round this so we'll put round in front and we'll wrap this in parentheses that's almost identical to the way that we scaled our proximity value reading but this time we're getting the value from the potentiometer and instead of maxing out at 255 we max out at 65,520 then if LEDs to light equals equals zero colon I want to set my strip dot fill and in between two parentheses zero comma zero comma zero that's going to turn off all the lights else colon I'm going to set my strips and I'm going to use slices in here remember we learned about slices during the last video so I'm going to say strip and in brackets zero colon LEDs to light that's going to light up all of the LEDs from zero through LEDs to light minus one so if I'm going to light up five of them I'm going to light up the strip lights from zero 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I'm going to set this equal to, and why don't we create two colors? So I'll create in all caps blue, I'll set that to in parentheses 0, 0, 0, 255, and I'll also create a black, and I'll set that equal to in parentheses 0, 0, 0. So then I'm going to set this first slice equal to the color blue, but remember I've got to do that as many times as there are LED lights to light up, so I'm going to multiply this by LEDs to light. So if LED lights is five, for example, that's going to create five versions of blue and assign them to the first five LED lights that are in that slice, zero, one, two, three, and four. Then underneath this, I'm going to create the slice that's going to turn off the remainder of the light. So that's going to be strip and in brackets, LEDs to light colon, and this is going to be strip num of light. So I'm going to go up to strip num of lights, but remember we go up to that value, but we never reach it. So the real last value in this slice is strip num of lights minus one, which is exactly what I want because I'm zero indexed. And I'll set that equal to black and multiply that by, and I need to calculate how many values I have left here. So that's going to be strip num of lights minus the LEDs to light. Then I'll shrink my font so you can see my code a little bit better. But again, we leveraged a lot of what we learned during our last video. I'm going to save this. Then I'm going to open up the serial monitor, open up the plotter, and let's take a look at how things work. I can already see some lights are lit up because my potentiometer isn't scrolled all the way to the left, but I can scroll up. When I scroll all the way counterclockwise, I can see there are no lights on. Scroll it back up again, and if I scroll in either direction, I can see that my lights are going on, they're going off. The potentiometer values are working great. So I'm turning off the lights in one direction, I'm turning them all on in the other direction. You can scroll right in the middle. Another mission accomplished. I hope you're feeling great about your skills, Pythonista. Keep at it. There's more big learning ahead.